Recently, Corsair announced their IQ Link ecosystem, and at its base, it's pretty similar to what Lee and Lee has been doing with their Unifans. We basically got a controller, in Corsair's case, they call it the IQ Link System Hub, and from there we can add stuff to it, but unlike Lee and Lee, Corsair is not limiting themselves to fans. Like, for example, the QX120, which are actually the topic of today's video, but we will get to them in a minute. No, Corsair wants their controller to control everything. Water pumps, screen modules, whole AIOs, the RGB and possibly even a screen on everything that can fit something that lights up. They are marketing this as a whole ecosystem that can control everything via a single cable standard using a single controller. And for the most part they did an excellent job except for one very crucial part, but let's first talk a bit about the fans. Corsair's new IQ Link QX120 RGB exists in two different versions, a white one and a black one. But it's not that simple, cause you can get them as a starter kit, like here, containing three fans, or as an expansion kit containing only a single one. And the thing is, you need to get the starter kit first, because only in that box you will get the IQ Link System Hub, as well as a 600mm long cable to attach one of the fans, and the necessary things to connect fans to each other. You could also get everything separately, but financially speaking you don't want to do that. Now to install these you first got to install the controller. This one is fairly simple, a proprietary to PCIe 6 pin for power and a USB 2.0 internal to use the software. Sounds fairly easy and pretty much what Lee and Lee has been doing on the last generation. On the two other sides of the controller we got these plugs. Here we can start connecting stuff. Using the 600mm long included cable we can connect the first fan using this whatever the hell this is plug. And if you want to connect another fan to the block, we just need to take the female to male adapter, push it into the female connector on the other side of the fan and then add that secondary fan, but don't forget to add the spacer which basically just makes sure that the whole thing doesn't bend too much. Which by the way you can also use to show off some magic tricks the next time your nephews are around. Now the fans do not hold onto the connector alone, there are actually some additional magnets involved which are keeping them together. And ignoring the fact that at some point you will actually screw everything into something, at some point which kind of renders these magnets irrelevant, they are surprisingly strong and can keep the fans together no matter if a physical connection is present or not. Now before I say anything else, cause otherwise this review will just be a roller coaster of feelings, I believe for the connection part Corsair created a golden standard. The cables and connector part are incredibly sturdy. They go in and out so smoothly, they are keeping everything together incredibly well, they are reversible, usable on both sides of the fans, Corsair did a fantastic job. And even compared to Lee and Lee's Unifan approach with that like sidewise sliding in connector, this is physically way superior and actually so freaking robust that I am ready to ignore that I am forced to have one cable sticking out like in a straight angle on the first fan, which is really dumb if you're trying to hide stuff, but hey, at least it will keep on going for longer than I will. But cause they're still fucked up. Ignoring that the cable should definitely be angled at 90 degrees because this just looks awful, which by the way it exists. No, the issue is how are we supposed to install these fans separately? If you get the starter kit, you are forced to use these in one triple block. There is no way around it. Let's say you are fine with three of these in the front, but you want to have another one in the back as exhaust. Well, thankfully there is the expansion pack, but uh, it doesn't come with a cable. So the only way you can physically separate these and make them spin is by getting some sort of additional cable, be it a single one cause the controller has two ports or some sort of splitter, which I needed to do for this review anyway because I need to physically separate them at some point. So I wasn't particularly happy about that. So if you ask me, I don't care about that 90 degree thing, but include a goddamn splitter in the box. Whew. Let's pause the whole IQ stuff for a minute and talk about these fans. These QX120 fans have a six wing design which are fairly big and heavily bent. Given how thick everything is, the frame and the fan feel quite robust and everything feels fairly well made. Around every screw hole we got a comedic amount of rubber, just a very small circle, but to be honest this is exactly what you need. It's 
it just needs to do like the first touch. Everything beyond that is just added rubber for nothing. But what about the RGB? Well, it's a lot and it's a joke. In the center of the fan, we got some LEDs. Then we got some more inside of the semi-transparent ring going around the impeller. And then we got two more visible strips that are located on the two sides that are not touching another fan. Yeah, it's a lot of RGB, but it's a complete joke. I can, without any issues, count the amount of LEDs on the frame. And because there are so few of them, the transitions are not really particularly smooth either. This is basically a budget implementation of RGB, not at all on the same level of, for example, Lee and Lee's. It's just odd. Why would Corsair do that in their brand new, super mega premium high-end ecosystem. It, it, it doesn't make any sense to me. But it really doesn't end here. The software is just not ready. Ignoring that I managed to make it crash a few times, which I'm very proud of, but sometimes the fans just don't want to be discovered at all. Customizing the LEDs to, to have a very specific setup is just a dark, deep hole of what the hell am I doing here? And God forbid you ever decide to change the amount of fans then the software will just, I don't detect anything at all anymore, screw you. And if you ever run into this kind of trouble, going into settings and then checking for an update on the controller triggers this menu. Force update is your friend, solves like 99% of problems. But there is actually something really, really cool attached to these fans that pairs with that software. This thermal sensor. Corsa basically built a thermometer into one of the rails that keeps the motor in place. And that can be really, really useful because using that one, you can set the fan to be reacting to the exact temperature of the air that is being pushed through it. But, is problematic. Let's say you install these as case intake fans or even on a, on a radiator as uh, pushing facing the front of the case. Well, the air will always have the same temperature. Congrats, you achieved nothing. Pull through a radiator on the other hand will work perfectly fine. It is pulling the air. The air is at that point already hot so it can react to that temperature. But the most logical way would be to use the thermometer of the exhaust fan, aka the back fan. Well, if you only get the starter pack, you can see why I'm so pissed about the non-included splitter in this box. The fan speed control of the software works fine though. That, that's one very positive thing. With all of that frustration about the IQ link and the, the ecosystem revolving around it, Let's finally talk a bit about performance. Running full speed, these QX120 fans can spin up to 2400 RPM, pushing 63.1 CFM at up to 3.8 mm of H2O. So spec-wise, it seems these are more for radiators than for case performance. But let's see about that. We first tested the QX120s using the case fan simulator, which measures the CPU temperature underneath a passive Nokia P1 in a wooden box where two fans are recycling the air within it. Spinning at max speed, Corsair's newest approach managed to keep the CPU at 44.7 degrees C above ambient, which is much, much worse than I would have ever imagined. We are talking below P12, a fan that is spinning 600 RPM slower, but I think I know why. To get a general thing out of the way, I don't trust spec sheets no matter what they say. I just don't believe them and I prefer testing them inside a weird looking ugly wooden box. That said, the performing part of the QX120 is incredibly small. I haven't mentioned it yet to build up like this climax of sadness, but apart from having shitty LEDs, the walls or the frame of the fan is ridiculously thick. And thanks to that, the actual wingspan of the fan boils down to pretty much exactly 100 millimeters. And compare that to, to 1010 of the Nokia NFA12, yeah, there isn't just a lot of fan to work with. But the problem gets even bigger because they are freaking loud. By slowly lowering the fan speed in 10% steps and noting down the noise and temps, I create these noise to performance lines. And because the QX120 already starts with such a bad result at 2400 RPM, the line is so far to the left side of the graph, it's just ridiculous. Compared to other ultra high quality expensive fans, Nokia A12, Lian Li P28, Be Quiet Silent Wing 4, they suck. But it's not even that. Even against Arctic's P12, fans that I can get for like pocket change, 
they lost in every way, which is just a joke. Do not get these for case fans. Buy whatever budget case you want, use only the fans that come in it for free and throw away the case. That will do a better job and it will be better for your money. But I said before that these are clearly radiator fans, so let's test them. Going wild on a 10 FPI 80mm thick radiator, we measured the water temperature of the loop above ambient. They suck less, but they still suck. At 12.2 degrees C above ambient, they might now be just an inch behind the Nokia NFA12, but considering the 2400 RPM speed, this is a joke. The Noise 2 Performance 9 has become exponentially better, I will give them that, but it still sucks. This is a line I expect from a budget fan. This is acceptable, this is very good, and what the hell is this? What the hell is going on? I I retest all of the fans here one or two days after the, the first initial test and usually they, the, the results can change like by a fraction of a degree, 0 0.1, 0 0.2, so I double check everything and these fans just suck. Like suck not in a general, not for like price to performance, no they are just bad. And I really tried to give them the benefit of the doubt. Like. For like, I think the third time in the lifespan of this channel, I researched other reviews before finishing my own. A, nobody tested them. Like, I, I'm, I had a really hard time finding any benchmarks for these. It's, it's basically impossible. And the only credible source I found with numbers to it was Tech Power Up. And they do things a lot different than I do. They go the scientific route. For example, they measure the actual CFM throughput and, and noise. That is not what I am doing. Their approach is extremely precise, but it will ignore the actual effect of what they are measuring. For example, let's say you have a, a heat sink that has, let's say, five heat pipes, and one of them is exactly in the center. Hence, if you have a 120 fan on top, the one in the center will be the least effective because it will be sitting right here where no air is actually moving. Now you got two fans, one with an enormous central fan hub, let's say AT30 or even an NFA12, and another one with a very small one. The fan with the enormous central fan hub pushes twice as much air as the one with the smaller one. On paper, the enormous one should always win, but in reality it may happen that the weaker one with the small one could win because the big one has a central fan hub that is so big that it stretches like above heat pipe 2 and 3, which are like adjacent to the central one. And if you measure the scientific way, it can happen that this effect will be ignored because you only measure what in the end goes through it all. And the same thing applies to, to for example, radiators. If you have like water channels and you, you cover a bunch of them, that's for example, just to go like off script here, that's for example why you have uh, like, like different shrouds where you put space in between the radiator and the fan to like get rid of this effect. To get back to the script, both methods are, in my opinion, perfectly valid and I would actually love to do what they are doing, but I just lack the funding for the equipment that you need for that, but it doesn't really matter because all of our results are kind of aligned perfectly. At 750 RPM for Tech Power Up, they pushed the least amount of air. At 1000 RPM, they managed to climb to the second lowest spot. At 1250 RPM, it is starting to look significantly better, but they are still very, very far behind a A12, and at 1500 RPM, they are back to sucking. For some reason, the graphs just stop at that point, I don't know why, but I can see how this will continue. So, these fans are just not good. Neither on radiators nor on cases, they just suck. This is so wild for me, because it's like, at the two ends of the spectrum, the build quality is really great, the proprietary implementation is the absolute best I have seen so far. This is far above anything I have seen in, in my lifetime. But it's like, whoever was in charge of the aspects of the fans that are actually required to do something, he was like on vacation. The amount of LEDs and the implementation is just a joke. And the fan, like the actual performance, is far below something that I can get for free. It's wild to me. And that's not even talking about the extremely expensive ecosystem that you would buy yourself into. A, a triple pack of these goes for around 160 US dollar on Corsair's shop. 
That's 53 bucks per fan. And not even taking into account that you probably need another $20 cable. 53 USD, that's expensive even by Noxia standards. Or Lee and Lee. Or whoever you want to name. Next to these, everything becomes a budget conscious alternative. And it's just mind boggling to me that there aren't like a dozen videos with the title reflecting their performance. I mean, sure, there aren't that many people that cover like fans specifically, but, but still. And the only explanation I can come up with is that every coverage that I do see involving these is like in a 5,000 euro build, including two Corsair radiators and hardline water cooling. And of course, nobody will notice that they suck because you, at that point, you barely need them to do anything at all. You have so much radiator, so many of them. So no, they are all spinning at like 200 RPM and you call it a day. But to end this, don't buy the Corsair QX120 fans. No matter the use case, they are really bad value. Like no idea who greenlit these. It is a mistake as a whole. But okay, this should be all for my very pleasant experience with Budget Destroyer 3000. Oh, on a side note, we have a Discord server, so if you want to join, the link is down below. And we got channel membership, so if you are planning to sell your soul for an RG poop emoji, that's one way to go. But if not, I'm also releasing the content to all members two or three weeks in advance. Except for the NDA stuff, because, you know, I, I don't want to get sued. Additionally, can rest assured that the income would only keep the channel afloat, but it would also serve to recover. I had to buy these using channel budget, and to the people commenting again and again that we should cover them, and kind of forcing me to buy them by that, yeah, that's on you. I'm joking, but thank you for watching, and hope to see you in the next one. Bye-bye.